Are flame retardants harming frogs? Flame retardants end up in our waterways where they become contaminants. Bill Karasov is looking into the issue. Certainly one important problem in the Great Lakes region is contaminants uh, that have been introduced uh, through manufacturing processes. Uh, but another problem uh, in many places is uh, high nutrient loads into waterways. And this can create a situation where uh, animals may suffer direct effects of uh, the contaminants. Uh, and also, they may be uh, exposed more to pathogens in the water that, whose numbers have been increased by high nutrient loads. Pathogens include viruses, bacteria, and parasites. The animals in this research are northern leopard frogs. They're native to Wisconsin. So what we're interested in in this, pro in this project is how contaminants affect frogs and whether exposure to contaminants might make them a little more susceptible to some of the common pathogens that occur out in the wild. <laughs> Tanya Carey is a PhD student in Karasov's lab. The frogs play an important role in, in our ecosystem, not only in the aquatic ecosystem, but also in the terrestrial ecosystem. Um, so they are a main portion of the, the, the food web, um, playing in terms of like juvenile fishes and even older, uh, older adult fishes really rely on, on tadpoles for, for a source of food. Um, and we're interested, of course, in our, our fish populations and keeping them healthy. Um, in terms of uh, them as, as adults, they control insect populations too. They're large consumers of, our, of, of insects. Um, so they do play vital roles in both the terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. Also, we can think of them as indicators as to the, the health of our, our um, environment and um, kind of as a heads up as to what we should be concerned about in terms of how environmental contamination might impact humans. So our main focus is to look at the immune system itself and how it might be being altered by environmental contaminant exposure and make these organisms then more susceptible to pathogens like um, parasites or bacteria or viruses. And then another goal of this project was to start to focus on a chemical that's been very little studied but is people are appreciating it's perhaps a problem in the Great Lakes region and this is a group of chemicals called polybrominated diphenyl ethers or PBDEs. Almost nobody has looked at this problem before. PBDEs are often used as flame retardants in many products including computers, bedding, and TVs. PBDEs turn up in house and office dust, in breast milk, and other human tissues. The researchers have been raising leopard frogs on a diet laced with different amounts of PBDEs. What we have here is um, a tadpole northern leopard frog and this guy's been being exposed to polybrominated diphenyl ether or the bromated flame retardant um, through its diet and we were watching him from when he first began swimming and first began eating all the way through to metamorphosis. The mature frogs are fed crickets until they can be analyzed. We anesthetize the frogs before we do any sorts of procedures, uh, dissections, um, so that they, they don't feel anything, of course. I mean, this is a solution called MS-222, um, and it's used in pretty much every aquatic organism for anesthesia. And it's a barbiturate, and it's, it's pretty much going to make them kind of go to sleep. And we just like to do what we call a toe pinch, just to make sure that there's no response. And he is fully under. The analysis involves sampling the frog's blood. The animal's veins are so small that blood must be taken directly from the heart. The blood samples are assessed to measure the health of the frog's immune system. The project's first findings suggest that PBDEs may indeed be a problem in the Great Lakes. And what we found was that levels of PBDEs in the food, at, at quite low levels that occur in the environment, or that could occur in the environment, were uh, increasing mortality. We had some uh, increased deaths in, fro in tadpoles that were eating that food, and uh, slower growth rates and slower rates of development. Check back here for updates on this research. Brought to you by the University of Wisconsin Sea Grant Institute.